what's been on my mind lately is how to thrive in this program, especially with going through boards, something that a lot of the people surrounding you tend to um, demonize in a way. And it doesn't have to be that way. And that's really how I tried to get through it. Um, so the reason I put this picture here is because a lot of my focus recently has been on how to be your own rocker. Because one of the main things um, about this program and about life is that things shift. And the things that were once reliable and stable don't always stay that way. And sometimes you need to learn how to be that for yourself because that is the only true, truly reliable thing that you have is just being able to be consistent for yourself and being that positive influence that you want to have in your life while everything else around you moves around. I once had a mentor say to me, um, enlightenment is not sitting on top of a mountaintop alone, it's finding peace within the storm. And so, Pamela Chodron is one of my favorite writers, also one of Dr. Bo's favorite writers. Um, but one of my favorite quotes from her is, only when we accept that there is no one and nowhere better to be, can we truly step into who we are and where we are. So I feel like, even if it's not intentional, a lot, a lot of the time in this program there can be competitiveness, even if it's just coming from inside, and like, oh, that person's better just for me, or I'm slower, and then we forget that it's like, you just spent the last two weekends at these seminars that this person never went to, and they spent the last two weekends at these seminars that you never went to, so they might be ahead of you on one aspect, but you might be ahead of them on another aspect, and just kind of taking into account our individual differences, and recognizing that every single journey is our own journey and there's not really a way to compare it to somebody else's um, and knowing that no one can make you feel inferior without your consent so I this presentation is mostly quotes from people who have been very powerful people in my life and uh, things that come to mind especially when I'm in that place of not quite feeling myself or feeling kind of down and taking into account that you have no idea what's going on in somebody else's life and people are usually quite good at hiding things. Um, and like with something like a concussion or someone who's been through PTSD or something like that, you never quite know why they're doing what they do, but if you can take into account that we're all on the human journey together, then it makes it a little bit easier. And uh, one of my favorite Maya Angelou poems, she says, like a tree planted by the river, I shall not be moved. And so that just kind of allows you to remember that you can be that plantedness for yourself. You can be that rock for yourself. And that's something that you can always come back to. Um, and then when we talk about compassion and thinking about those other people and where they are and what's going on in their journey, you also have to like recognize what's going on in yourself and your own journey and be able to call yourself out on your stuff, even if it's shameful and most people hate dealing with shame, but it's actually one of the most powerful things you can face because it's how you better yourself. And a lot of people tend to think of emotions as bad and good and that shame is a bad one. It's not necessarily. It's just something that enlightens you about yourself so that you can move forward. And mm -hmm. when you can face these things in yourself and face that you're not perfect and face that you're human, one, it gives you space to be compassionate with yourself and be okay with failing and be okay with learning and being okay with being a student. Um, that was one of the most powerful things one of my mentors said to me as I've gone through this program is just be okay with being a student. Like we all have to learn this at some point. And when we can see that in ourselves, and this, I don't know if anyone was present for the last presentation I get, did, but it was, um, I had a quote from Carl Jung, who's a death psychologist, and he talked about how you have to face the shadow self, the parts of yourself that you're so incongruent with that you can't even see them. And when you get to the point where you can do that and you can recognize them and you can see your own humanity, it allows you to see the humanity in other people as well. Um, and it just makes your life easier because instead of feeling like, oh, this person is doing this thing to me purposefully, you're like, oh, they probably have something that's driving that and it's probably not mine. Um, and this is, again, Pamela Chodron because she's amazing, but only to the extent that we expose ourselves over and over to annihilation can that which is indestructible be found in us. So those low moments, that we were just talking about and those moments where you feel like you're at rock bottom. I mean, I've had a couple of those in my life just from different life events because sometimes life just gives you a lot at once and it's hard and that's okay. And like, it's okay to have things be hard and it's okay to feel quote unquote bad emotions. And because dealing with these things and feeling these things, it's how we learn to move through them and how we learn how to deal with them and how we learn how to help our patients 
patients deal with them. So I don't know if any of you have read um, uh, Ashiana Kelly Rodriguez's book, Jose's Wife. She spoke at seminar a little while back. It's called A Beautiful Spiral. And her book is all about trauma and how it helped her become the healer that she is. And it's like we can't heal people beyond or some people have said we can't heal people beyond what, how much we've healed in ourselves. And I think there is a truth to that. And I'm all about people taking things with a grain of salt and making your own perspective about things. So if that statement doesn't quite sit with you, that's okay. Make it into your own, but it's the concept that you want. It's important. Um, and I recently was watching a video about a woman who was wrongly imprisoned for years as a death row inmate, her and her husband, and her husband was executed. And in this imprisonment, she realized that the only thing that she still had was like her own life and how she could spend that time. And she ended up turning it into a spiritual practice. And she said, I have no laundry to do. I have no food to cook. I have no responsibilities. And she spent her time doing yoga and meditating and reading in this wrongful imprisonment. And then was finally released. And she said that she got back to the real world. And she said that wasn't freedom either. She had to pay bills. She had no money. She had so really her entire point was that freedom comes from the inside and it's this personal space that you create for yourself and she said once you find that freedom it's something that no one can take away from you and so it can't come from anywhere else um, Herbie Hancock is an amazing musician and he was talking about how he was playing with um, another musician and he ended up playing this chord that was just like so horribly wrong and the other musician like took a breath and like played a few notes and made his chord right. And so the quote that I took away from his talk was like, try to make anything that happens something of value. And so it doesn't matter if it doesn't go the way you plan it or it doesn't matter if you quote unquote fail. Thomas Edison said, I never failed. I learned 9,999 ways to not make a light bulb. And so it's just, allowing those things to become something of value to you, even if it wasn't what you were expecting. And so, again, Pema Shotgun, because she's amazing. Um, I love this. She says, we think that the point is to pass the test or overcome the problem, but the truth is that things don't really get solved. They come together and they fall apart. And then they come together again and they fall apart again. It's just like that. The healing comes from letting there be room for all of this to happen, room for grief, room for relief, room for misery and for joy. And That'll happen in this program too, where it's like some days you'll be feeling like right on the money, like you're really good at adjusting, and then the next week you suck, and you like can't figure out why. Um, or you'll have friendships that are really, really strong, and then all of a sudden they shift, and all of a they're not so strong, and I don't know if it's because you have different schedules or people are just going through their own journeys, but just allowing yourself and allowing those other people to have space for their journey. And I was talking to um, a teacher at a seminar I went to over summer, about what to do when you're trying to work with your emotions towards someone or trying to work with someone and they just don't really share your perspective on like what it means to grow. I was like, do you just hold space for that person in their journey? And she goes, no, you hold space for yourself. I was like, okay. And that kind of changed the way I've been approaching things. Um, and you know, I can say all these things a bunch, but it doesn't make them easy to do. Part of the reason I'm sharing this with you is because it's what's been on my mind. It's the things that I've struggled with and like learning how to be okay with that. And that's why I want to share it with you is because I think we all go through this, whether we like to admit to it or not. Mm -hmm. um, and so Pema concluding, she says, the future is completely open and we are writing it moment to moment. And really this moment is all that you have. And so you can hold on to those things that are frustrating you or you can choose to let them go and just watch them with curiosity and interest and just remember that like you're here because this is what you wanted to do. You put yourself here, you're paying to be here and remembering why you came, going all the way back to the why. Um, and the other why that was mentioned is like, why did you come and like, yes, for your patients, but also for you, like this is something that you wanted to do and why, like where does it come from? And I think ultimately when you answer a question, oh, it's for money, oh, it's to help people, oh, it's to do this, it's to do this, and you ask yourself why again, why again, and you drill deeper and deeper, it always comes to a place of wanting to have peace for yourself and whatever way you 